In today's video, I want to talk about Dubsado and how I'm optimizing it for my graphic design business. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing wonderful. Welcome back to another episode of Wine and Design. I poured myself um, a Trader Joe's organic, they have like a really good organic wine line and they're actually very affordable. I think this was like a $10 wine and it was organic, which is like a really good deal. Um, but it is a, what is it? I think it's a, I want to say Cabernet, but I know that's a red, so... I'm not sure, <laughs> but it's a white wine and it's amazing and it's chilled and it's warm out. So I'm happy. I'm so inspired and motivated this week after my last week's retreat. Um, if you guys saw my last video, I was in Florida for a graphic design retreat and it was amazing. It was exactly what I needed without really knowing I needed that. And I think it was something I needed because I feel so re-inspired and just excited and just like ready to tap into my best designer self and my best business self. So I'm very excited. I have a lot of really good ideas um, for content, for videos. So if you guys haven't checked out that last video, go check it out because it's one of my favorites to rewatch because it was just such a amazing week. I am just really excited to sit down with you guys today and share a little bit of what I learned last week in terms of Dubsado. Um, so Dubsado is what I use for my project management. It's where I am able to send invoices, send contracts, uh, make sure my clients are paying on time. And it also helps me uh, with workflows and task boards and client portals. So it really has everything I could need. To be honest, I wasn't using all of the amazing features it has to offer until last week and until I hired my very first official uh, my very first virtual assistant who's been able to go in and help me um, optimize it. So I've definitely learned quite a bit within a short amount of time and I want to share all of that with you guys today. So I'm going to start recording my screen. I'm just going to show you guys um, a few different things. The first thing I want to go over is canned emails. The second thing I want to go over is workflows, and then I'm going to just show you an example of what my client portal is looking like now. And then if we want to get deeper into it, I will definitely make another video, but I just want to show you the capabilities of Dubsado and how I'm using it for my business. So I am recording my screen now and I wanted to talk about canned emails. So my virtual assistant was nice enough to go in here and clean up my canned emails. But basically what these are, it makes it so easy and automated, honestly, when you're emailing your clients or if you have payment reminders set up, this is where you would set up the email that you wanted to say. So if I go on in here to my client payment reminder, and click in there, I'll be able to edit exactly what that says and it'll apply it to all the emails I send every client. So you'll notice there's some smart fields here that will be changed to my client's specific needs. So it'll tell them when the payment's due, the amount, um, and when it, um, and uh, a link to the invoice. So it's really nice because you can set up everything in here so that it's just automated for all of your other clients. Um, and then I also have canned emails for my discovery call. So the second someone fills out my contact page on my website, within about 15 minutes, they're sent a link to a scheduled discovery call. And this is where I can customize what I want that email to say before they schedule a discovery call. So basically just, um, I'd love to schedule a call to learn about your business and then I also have a smart field for my scheduler. And I'm also using Dubs Auto Scheduling in here now instead of Calendly. I used to use Calendly, but I was like, that's an extra payment that's not needed because um, Dubs Auto offers scheduling now as well. So they really have it all. It's kind of amazing. But this is where I have all of my emails set up so that when I'm adding um, my clients to specific workflows, these emails are already ready um, written out and they're set to go. So it makes it really nice because I don't have to like think about what I want to say in every email because that takes time. Every little thing takes time and this definitely saves a lot of time. So um, you'll also see here there's like past due payment reminders 
or if an installment was missed, um, that's in here too. So it's very nice. This is actually way cleaner than it was before. Before it was just like a long, long list of emails that I had just like set up and not deleted. So I'm super thankful for my virtual assistant for going in and cleaning that up and just like re revising my emails to sound like my voice. So those are canned emails. Um, I did want to talk about workflows. So over here on the left hand side, you'll see those different options. Uh, workflows is one of the things I really optimized within the last week. And so this is my workflow for the very initial phase, which is my client inquiry. So that just means that um, they scheduled the discovery call. And now um, you'll see here that it has change project status immediately after an appointment scheduled, send email. So that just means like the second the discovery call is scheduled, um, it'll change my project status, which is really nice. And then um, send email next steps one out hour after an appointment has ended so my next step email is just like thanking them for the call and also providing them what's going to be happening next and um, just kind of like a follow-up email so now i have that set up so i don't have to manually go in and like write a whole email um, i can add a, key, a few notes because i do want my emails to be personable but this now i have like a process and you'll see here that button um, is grayed out that says approve. I have to go in and hit approve. And that's when I would add in my little notes about the client call and then hit approve and it'll send for me. Um, and then I have it set to one hour after the appointment has ended. That way it's not like right away and super robotic. And then at the end, create to do start relevant proposal for clients. So we set this in here. That way my virtual assistant can go in and start creating the proposal. So that is um, the first workflow. Now, I would apply this to, so for example, I just had a client reach out to me today. Um, and if I wanted to apply that to her project, what I would do is um, I need to create a project first off. Um, apply the client inquiry one because that's our newest one. And um, let me apply. Mark completed. Okay, mark completed. So I'm just kind of showing you the steps I would take um, when a client, I just had a discovery call with her today, so I'm, I just set that to completed and now change products, project status immediately after an appointment is scheduled. Um, let's force that now. So now the project status will be changed. And then this is where I would go in and I hit edit and that's where I could add in my email. Um, I still need to create my emails for these workflows, but that's where I could create like what to expect next. Um, do you have questions or anything? And you can set when you want that to be sent. And um, I have that at required. I need approval before I send this. That way I can customize the email. Um, but once I have that done, I can hit apply and force it now. Um, are approved and I'll just do it on its own and then create the to-do. So this is where you would just apply those workflows. So now um, I also have a, a branding and web workflow and that would be similar process where I would send the proposal. We'd have to hit approve for that, change product, project status, send form. Um, so if they don't fill the proposal out, which has happened to me, a few times um, where a client has it doesn't fill it out right away so right now I have it set so that if they didn't complete it within three days I send them a reminder um, in the same email to fill it out and then I do that and I give them about 21 days and if they don't do anything by 21 days the project is expired and archived and then if they reach out again we can talk about reopening it but that way I don't have it sitting in here and just like bogging down my Dubsado and also confusing me if I see a client that never followed through. So workflows are awesome um, because it really helps me with my process and also is just more automated now and it just keeps everyone on track. So um, yeah, I love it. It's so much easier, but um, so that's workflows. And now I wanted to show you guys an example of a client portal. 
So I'm going to open up one of my clients whose portal we have set up and show you guys what that looks like. So if you don't set a password for your Dubs Auto portals, um, it's just the email. So that's really nice. Um, so add her email in. And now when I log in, we will see, you could see the emails that we've sent back and forth, the project. Um, if I go to a profile, you can see like her information. Um, but on the project side of it, if you scroll down to the bottom, I can actually add documents and contracts and my board. So my board is awesome because that is where I have all my tasks. So if I click in there, I'll be able to open up and see what's going on during what week and when it's due. So super nice. This is like one of my favorite parts about it because I can just check off when things are done. It makes it so nice. So love that. And that is an example of the Dubs Auto portals. Super, super nice to have and very easy. So that's just a little bit of my Dubs Auto optimization. I definitely have a lot more I want to do with it. But just having like workflows, task boards, portals, canned emails, all of that set up, that alone is saving me so much time. And I really recommend that if you guys have Dubs Auto, you look into doing those different items as well. It's so, so nice to have things automated. It saves time. It I feel less stressed lately and it's just, it's amazing. So um, let me know down below if you guys are using Dubs Auto what you guys love about it if there's a tool that you really really love and that saves you time i'd love to hear about it but um i really hope this was helpful i'm also going to be making um, more videos about what i learned and also going more into dubs auto later on but i just wanted to show you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of how i'm using it and all the things i've learned so let me know if you guys liked this video by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing down below if you want to see more and I will see you guys in my next video. Ooh.